Four matches to go, so let's not waste any time getting our players to the table. Up first, please welcome five-time ranking event champion. Let's hear it for the captain, Ali Carter. And his opponent is the reigning champion of the world. Please welcome the Belgian Bullet, Luca Roussel. Well, if your nerves can take it, <laughs> there's another match to come after that extraordinary Extraordinary finish between Mark Allen and Mark Selby. It's Luca Purcell, the world champion, against Ali Carter, of course, has already had uh, Here we a go, then. Quarter close final match two. himself Let's last night, commentary team. It's Jack beating Ken. Ding Junhui 4-3. Thank you. The first frame, Luca Purcell to break. Luca Purcell to get us underway. Match two of quarterfinals day. It's already been... A memorable day. We've only had one match, Dominic. What a finish that was. Well, wasn't that last match one of the most extraordinary endings to a match that you're likely to see? It was a thrilling climax, it has to be said, and you just didn't know who was going to win it in the end. But it was one of those matches, wasn't it, that whoever lost it would be bitterly disappointed. In this case, of course, it's going to be Mark Selby, who's feeling the disappointment. And what do we have in store for us here, I wonder? Luca alluded to the fact that he will be going for the one six seven super maximum in this match. And he's certainly got the capability to pull that feat off. Such an attacking, such an exciting player, Luca Brussel, our current world champion, of course. Who it has to be said has been a little out of sorts for most of the season, but with the world championships just around the corner, I expect Luca to be playing so much for most of the season. Yeah, we were talking earlier, weren't we? He does play an open game. He likes to get the balls open. So far, that golden ball has not moved, really. Well, hang on, that red's got him. Meanwhile, it's that sort of day. It's that sort of day today. The, now, we talk about maximums, OK? You, you make a maximum, you have the chance to pop the golden ball. Look at it now, it's tied up. <laughs> but I was saying, yeah, the, the, just the way he likes to get the balls open, you could see that, that golden ball maybe moving at some point anyway. Let's see how far he gets here. Eight. He did play well at the Welsh Open. He got to the quarterfinals there. He's had a, a, a quiet season, really. No. Hasn't played in everything. And, of course, not doing well in, earlier in the season. He didn't get into the Players Series, those three big events. World Grand Prix, Players Championship, Tour Championship. So he's missed a few big, big events, really. Still time, though, to find form before the Crucible. He's the only player, isn't he? The only player who knows when he'll be playing in the World Championship. It'll be at the 16. 10 o'clock on the morning of April the 20th. He'll be walking out as defending champion. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Couldn't really have played for the black there, but you've got to bear in mind the fact that with the red near the left-hand side cushion, the chances were maximum there. Virtually nil with the brown on that bolt cushion in addition. And the golden ball, because there isn't a maximum available now, has been removed by our referee Tatiana Wollaston.
32. have gone into the reds there but i think he feels there's a chance that a red might find a pocket somewhere so played for the only available loose one but could bring further reds into play here in potting it 38 oh, just misjudged it caught more of the pack than he expected to so that will be end of break but nevertheless a useful start in this opening frame Yeah, it's an interesting clash this. They've not had many meetings. 4-1 to Carter on the head-to-head. -head. But all before Brussel, of course, became world champion. Ali Carter had a bit of a nerve shredder himself last night with Ding. It's his seventh quarter-final of the season in all tournaments, so he's had a pretty consistent campaign. Number eight in the world. As he plays the cross double. Oh, this will be a very, very difficult snooker to escape from. But from Luca's point of view, he only needs to rest into the pack pretty much anywhere. It should be safe. But it may take several attempts to get there. It's already half past nine local times here, so of course we've got two more matches after this. We've got Judd Trump and Sean Murphy, Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins. The evening session will be delayed, so it's going to be a late old finish because uh, of Saudi three hours ahead of the UK. Yeah, nicely done. Obviously, he didn't want to chip one out and leave it on, which he's not done. pleased with that safety shot the cue ball hasn't found the bolt cushion and I think Luca can chip this red into the left corner it's a very thin cut but I don't think he'd be cannoning into other balls but it's a very difficult pot to attempt so he may just decide to protect his lead here and play a better safety that's exactly what he's done Although the red that he's played is potable for Ali Carter, but he will be hampered a little by the brown.
It's a good white. Oh, it's a good kiss. <laughs> wow. Spread the reds. Looked like he might have left the one to left corner till that little kiss in behind the pink. See that Luca can get through to one red at least, but what he can do with this, goodness only knows with that red that's near the left corner that's profoundly snookered by the pink. He's in a lot of trouble here, Luca, because as you say, Dave, Ali has just spread the reds far and wide, so it's unlikely really that Luca will leave this safe. Yeah, this is where you see sometimes the player just have a sort of whack, you know. <laughs> Hope for the best. I'm not saying he'll do that, but we've seen it done. He could come across the table, past the blue, and rest upon that red near the left center, just try and get in behind it. Because even if he does leave a pot on for Ali Carter then, the cube would be so close to the side cushion, he wouldn't be able to get good position on the color. Luke had got up his sleeve here. Trying to get the cube in behind the black. Needs to keep running, and it hasn't. Well, that little flick off the green in behind the pink has made a big difference in this frame. <laughs> Carter can get in with this initial red, that is. One. Another nice kiss, actually. So off we go, Ali Carter. We know he's playing good stuff. Came through that win last night over Ding. In general, the season has been certainly a lot more successful than Brussels. So he'll be confident, I'm sure. Ali would love to remove is the one that's closest to the black spot. That's the reason he didn't play for the black from a different red just then. Because the black would have been tied up and the red next to it would have been as well. This is certainly a key red to remove because the red just in the middle of the three there becomes available into the same pocket. And that's the red that Ali wants to see the back of because then he can bring the black into play if he wishes. Looks like he can still get through to the red. Obviously tougher than he would have hoped. And he has missed it. Ali Carter, 20. One. 
to say for himself. Looked good at the Welsh Open, not just getting to the last eight, but how he played along the way. Beat the likes of Graham Dot, Tom Ford, Martin O'Donnell beat him in a high quality match. Six. He looks a little bit bemused by the results there of the positional shot, but I think it's worked out really well myself because in potting this red to the left corner, he can just nudge into play that one that's near the left centre because he'll need at least two of these remaining reds. But he's missed it. I'm a little Jacob surprised. It wasn't difficult for somebody of Luca's ability. I'm sure they must have been watching the end of the previous match and you do wonder if some of that nervous energy is sort of carried into this one because you couldn't help but get caught up in it, the Alan Selby finish. One. I think the difficulty with the previous match is it looked as though it was over about three hours before it was. So psychologically, both of these players would have been half thinking they'd have been on much sooner than they were, and then they've had to re-prepare themselves mentally to go out and Six. play, and then probably thought that they'd be on again in 10 or 15 minutes' time, and then they had to wait another hour because the match just went to its conclusion at the very death there on the final ball. Seven. Four frames to three, so they've had to hang around a long time and it does affect your preparation. Ali Carter, seven. Yes, and we're starting with another close frame here. Ten points between them. Really unlucky there, Ali Carter, who played a super shot there, just a couple of inches short of pace. And this really is actually on for Luca. No attempt at it, though. Has a useful 10 points lead when you consider that that brown and the yellow are both awkwardly positioned. It's going to be that sort of day, isn't it? And of course, it concludes eventually with O'Sullivan Higgins. <laughs> Got Trump Murphy to look forward to before that. If they all go the distance, then it'll be breakfast time by the time it all finishes. Play was actually delayed, wasn't it, before uh, before the first match? So it's been quite a lengthy wait, as you say, for these two, because you have to be at the venue an hour after the first match starts. That's the kind of rule. So they have been here a while. overhead you'd think that was a snooker and it is that could be an important piece of good fortune for Luca Brussel that red would have been very possible for Ali Carter had he been able to get through to it
one. He'll do well to win the frame from here, Luca. He'll win. <laughs> He will. He will need that awkward brown near the bulk cushion. The yellow's also going to be tricky to get onto because of the position of the pink. Slightly in Luca's way, perhaps. Six. It sort of feels like we've started with a decider here. It's been quite edgy. Brussel is aware that it's been the same all season, but certainly as we head towards the World Championship, eyes are kind of on him. You know, people are wondering can he start to produce the goods with the crucible heading into view? big event like this where he's a winner that would certainly change the dynamic it would change the narrative for him going to Sheffield points to the good he could attempt the green and hold for the brown but it's a big risk but all of a sudden now this frame is beginning to open up a little with just the brown in an awkward position where's this cue ball going where is this cue ball going it's okay he's played a very sell. good shot but my goodness he took a risk him with that corner pocket there Trouble here, Carter, because 18 behind. Yeah, this is the problem. So, Brussel just needs the green. Oh, now is it a free ball? Look at Brussel, four. No, but <laughs> he's running out of points. He's got to hit it this time. He's 22 behind. If he misses it, he needs a snooker. Yeah. Well, he's had one attempt at it. I think he'll have learned enough from it to make the escape this time. I'll be pleased with this, I think. Excellent cue ball. But the green is still potable. Yeah, we know what a great potter he is. Surely not. <laughs> no, Three. So, 25 to the good. One snooker required, but we've already seen. We saw it last night. We saw it again this afternoon. Things can happen yet. And they kind of are in this event, aren't they? With all the talk about the golden ball, but there's been so much drama outside of that. Ah, well, Seven. there you go. He's actually in a snooker, but he's potted the brown. 29 in front, 18 on. Yeah. 
Yeah, and important to hit the blue. Otherwise, Carter could pop the blue one on the pink. He's staying in his seat. A dramatic start to what's already been a dramatic day here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. It's the world champion, Luca Brussel, who leads Ali Carter 1 0. All I know. Ali Carter to was last night the great drama with John Higgins getting to 120 just finished very tight to the yellow anyway Ali Carter wasn't in the mood for playing on for snookers was he I don't think he enjoyed frame one particularly he did have that good chance went wrong Luca Purcell one to the good Mark Allen will be the opponent in the semi-finals of course be a lot of talk about the crucible of course because it's coming round the corner but it's interesting isn't it because nobody's sort of tipping Luca this year but nobody really tipped him last year so he could do a Joe Johnson maybe get to the all the way to the final as Joe did in 87 having won it out the blue in 86 we will find out from April 20. another attacking safety from Ali but it's gone wrong I'm sure Luca can see enough of this red he can but getting on to a colour whenever the object ball is in the jaws of a pocket like this is never an easy task but if Luca can play this with some backspin the keeper will be running around the angles he played it plain ball and the keeper has gone nowhere well, I have to confess, I think he's been very fortunate there. I don't think he intended that cue ball to come across for the pink in the left centre the way it did. That could be potentially a frame winner here for Luca because the reds are in beautiful positions. Yeah, regardless of whether he goes all the way at the Crucible again, I think people just want to see him playing well because he's such a great player to watch in full stride. Such a great natural talent Seven. has enjoyed his, himself as world champion as, in, as he's entitled to but he's been saying in recent times he's made an effort to lose some weight to get back on the practice table to get his game in gear for the remainder of this season and that's why this tournament is not a ranking event but I think it is important for him if he could do well here the confidence he'd take from that because it's all top Eight. players of course it's the top ten in the world he did do well early season in a big invitation about the Shanghai Masters where Ronnie O'Sullivan pipped him 11-9 in the final I think he's been unlucky Thanks. there Cube will run through with the reds and I don't know if he can cut this red into the left left corner pocket it's a very thin one you won't have much control with the cue ball one thing I love about Luca, he does play with a smile on his face, has a lovely disposition. And he doesn't give off much in the way of negative. He doesn't give any negative vibes to his opponents or anybody else. It's just the way he is. He's fairly emotionless, really. Whereas his opponent, Ali Carter, does give off a lot of negativity, I feel, at times. Oh, where's the cue ball going? Oh, oh, it's just found the pocket. Goodness me, this table is quick. It really does seem to run on forever, the cue ball. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's unlucky. But I know what you mean about Brissell. I think the thing with him that I like, he always seems to be enjoying it. He wouldn't have enjoyed that shot, by the way, but in general. And that's quite a good weapon to have. Especially at the Crucible, where it's supposed to be pressure and difficult, if you can look like you're enjoying yourself, you can scare a few opponents as Ali Carter knocks in the good red. One. Carter was saying actually last night, he's worked on that, he's worked on that sort of energy that he creates. He's tried to be more positive and has felt that it's, it's helped him this season. Six. He's been in a couple of big finals, of course, Wuhan Open and the Masters. Mm. And just recently, the semi finals of the Players' Championship in Telford. 
Seven. And he had fallen away a little bit. He was at the top 16, but he won the German Masters last season, just over a year ago. Got to the Players' Championship final as well a few weeks later, so got back in through winning a tournament, getting to a final. And now he's up to number eight, so he's not looking over his shoulder. He's looking actually to press on for the remainder of this season. 13. It stands right now, actually, these two would be seeded to play in the quarterfinals of the World Championship, but of course it doesn't always work out like that. important isn't it in these best of seven matches not to fall too far behind so it's an important frame this rally carter 21. yeah especially if he can win it off that unlucky enough Marcel may feel there's a sense of injustice I think he's just finished awkwardly here, Ali. The red to the right corner is very straight and he can't get nicely on his colour from it. So he did have a quick look at the red bit to the left centre to see if that held any value positionally. So yeah, it's an awkward angle and of course it's not going to be easy to position the bridge rest here either. So work to do. Well, he could run through off the side cushion here for red into the left corner as long as he can avoid the cannon on the black with the cue ball. Decided to come twice across instead and he's played it nicely. Superb. Didn't have much angle, did he? You could see that from the overhead, but... 47. Played it brilliantly, so what a chance to press on now and level this match. All from that 48. Luke Purcell in off. He potted the red, just skimmed off the pink. The white went in the right middle. <laughs> Typically sort of bustling alley car to break this. Lots of energy around the table. That's how he plays.
54. So two pots away, really, this pink. 55. And he'll be 52 in front, but we've seen a few frames that have been stolen with snookers needed, so he'll want to nail this. Six, two, one. one more red makes such a difference. At the moment, it's one snooker needed. If he pots the red, it's three. And there Six, it is. Two, Highest break yesterday in that match with Ding was 94. Don't think Ali that's going to make too much difference. It was a good break. Pack. 67 from a bit of misfortune, you've got to say, from Brussel, but that's not Ali Carter's problem. He's won the frame, he's levelled the match. It's one all. It's day two of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker, live from Boulevard City. It's already been a dramatic day. If you're tuning in expecting to see Sean Murphy against Judd Trump right now, that was scheduled to start about now. That will follow in due course. The first match was a lengthy one. In fact, there was a delay of 40 minutes three. before play began. Mark Allen beat Mark Selby 4-3 in an absolute thrilling decider. And here in the second quarterfinal of the day, Luca Purcell and Ali Carter level at one each. Purcell won the first, Carter the second. So Trump v Murphy will follow. And then the last match, worth waiting for, Ronnie O'Sullivan against... John Higgins. I'm sure Ronnie's been just keeping an eye on things with that golden ball scenario because, of course, it's the first player to make it who scoops the jackpot. He's made more maximums than anyone else. I'm sure he will be having that on his mind later. Carter knocks in. One. Terrific long red at the start of this frame. And the good news for Ronnie is there won't be a maximum in this frame. <laughs> That's always the problem with snooker, isn't it? You break off and so often you do leave a long pot on for your opponent, but there's no chance of holding for the black, so... Whether we'll ever see a, a 167 super maximum in this event, well, goodness only knows. There are one or two players that voiced their intentions of going for it. Luca Brussel one, Judd another, but practising from the black to the golden ball. No ranking points on offer here, so a little bit of pressure is relieved and players can express themselves a little more, perhaps. It's true, although Higgins, John Higgins said last night, he was shaking like a leaf, wasn't he? As he was, I mean, he got down to the yellow, that's how close he got. Uh, not a great uh, cue ball here, shake of the head from Ali. Three. Carter, three. <coughs> One. That was a really good pot from Luca. I wasn't sure he could pot that and avoid running into something with the cue ball, but he avoided all the reds. Look at that little gap he found there. Purposely played for a bolt colour, which is on nicely. Mm -hmm. And if he wished here, Luca, he could play the yellow with force and take the cue ball into the side of the pack of reds and open everything up. Cubal needs to keep running. It's a little short of pace, but he's just Three. about okay.
Four. Just tried to give it a little hurry up there, didn't he, with his arm, that cue ball. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So just leaving the, well, mid-range red. It's quite a reactive cloth, this, I think. Seen, uh, Nine. Players just slightly over-screw shots. Red, but has that cue ball just run on a few inches further than Luca would have liked? Can he get into the reds here? Oh, did as well as he could have done. But I don't think there's a possible red. I don't know if there's a potential plant Seven. available into the left centre, but in all honesty, I think it will just have to be a safety shot. lining up the two reds that I thought could be made into a plant, but this is very adventurous. No. Look at Purcell, 17. safety much too thickly but it could have finished worse this red is certainly on for Ali but he'll be at full stretch playing it as you can see but if it goes in he should be on the black oh well Ali thought it was in and so did I well that just goes to show how tight these pockets are playing because Ali didn't consider that this red would wobble and not go in it looked in A bit like Brussels in off in the last frame, it's now psychologically seems maybe significant. If Brussels this time can step in and make a nice break, because Carter was getting ready to come around and play the black, thought the red was in. His walk is very different to Carter's, isn't 16. it? It's a sort of languid, it's a bit Mark Williams, -ish, I suppose. Just sort of, okay, we're here to knock a few balls in, sort of thing. Everyone's different. Carter needs Seven. to be sort of pumped up, and maybe Brussel needs to be more laid back in his approach. Both win, win equally as much. Twenty-four. 
Oh, Luca smiling. I think he played for the red that's almost closest to the cue ball into the right corner, but he's on one in the middle of the bunch there into the same pocket, but perhaps doesn't have the most favourable angle from it to play for a colour. Yeah, to use a secondary red, but he's adjusted it nicely. Back in perfect position now. Forty. Needs one more red after the black. All off Ali Carter's missed to this left corner. Ready thought was going to drop and didn't. Just needs this one red to secure the frame barring snookers. I think he's well enough on it. So I'll be surprised to see him miss this. I'll go on to make a century break. Made 211 in his career. Yeah, only 13 this season. So that just shows you he's been a little bit AWOL. 56. You know, we haven't seen him in some of the bigger events. But put it this way, if he ended up retaining his world title, who would care what, what happened before that? 57. Guarantees on, 60. by the way, in the quarterfinals. 50,000, a little more than he won on a recent Belgian quiz show where he, he lost early on and went home with a printer. 65. <laughs> Could buy a lot of printers with uh, the money on offer here this week. 50. Yes, and let's not forget he celebrates 70. his 29th birthday in just three days' time. Well, the key there, obviously the break he made, yeah, 72, but also how it started. Ali Carter thought he got a red, he didn't go in. Brussel stepped in, and he's back in front at 2-1. Day two of three here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker, and this is the prize money they're playing for. 250,000 to the winner. In this round, the guaranteed 50,000. It goes up to 75, runner up 125, but at the bottom there, for the super maximum, the 167 with the golden ball, that's half a million dollars. That works out at about £395,000. Frame four, Ali Carter's a break. Ali Carter finds himself 2 1 down to Luca Brussel. <laughs> Two frames, one without. Either player doing much wrong, Brussel that rather unlucky in off, and then Carter missing a red that he thought he got, and that was that. Brussel made 72. And a terrific pot. We saw Carter, who was sort of eyeballing the white, wasn't he? 
concerned that he would leave a long red on, and well, he was right to be concerned. Yeah, if you look at the game of snooker itself, it's always considered to be an advantage to break off, much as it is serving in tennis, but it certainly isn't these days. Very difficult to get the cue ball behind a bulk colour from your break-off shot, and you nearly always leave that possible red on for your opponent, and these days with the standard of snooker that we witness, they're potting these reds so often and giving themselves the first opportunity, as Luca has done here. Rather low 20. on this red. In potting it, he may be able to bring other reds into play, but <coughs> if he does so, he'll have to trust to luck for position on the colour. So just skimming off them. 21. They may have landed in no man's land, but for that kiss on the blue. Just potted that red a little on the thick side, so the cue ball didn't run on those extra couple of inches that Luca was hoping for, but he has a little bit of an angle to work with here. I don't know if it's enough to screw into the reds with. That he's a great potter, he's a very confident one. He'd have fancied this. I know we keep referring to the, the World Championship, but I mean, it's inevitable. It still kind of feels fresh 14. in the memory, doesn't it? And the way he started the final against Selby, he just came out, threw absolutely everything at him at the start of the final. You know, biggest match he's ever played. Selby did peg him back later, but he did it again the second day. That third session came out, played it up. An unbelievable session of snooker, actually. It's what he can do, 41. and he can do it quick. That's the other thing. Before you know it, you're in serious trouble. Fourteen. 
It's looking very dangerous, Luca Brussel, it has to be said. 55. He's taken his chances in this frame of the last very, very well. Ali Carter must be concerned 56. now. 56. The prospect of facing a 3 1 deficit looms ever larger. All he's done is break off, isn't it, in this frame? Sixty-three. Yeah, he's still going to need a colour off the red. Again, he just slightly lost the cue ball there. I say this cloth does look reactive. And the break is over, and there's enough on here, so this could be a big moment. There's still seventy-five on here. Sixty-three, the lead. Ways develop the remaining reds as well. Big chance this rally Carter. What? Yeah, the lead is one thing, but it's where the balls are, as you say. You know, there's nothing on a cushion. So it's all about composure from the captain. With a chance for a big, big steal. He looks certain to be 3 1. Largely shut out the last couple of frames, Ali Carter. So controlling the cue ball here will be key for him. Seventeen. Could do with just getting rid of that red that's to the left of the pink spot. That would bring the two reds together into play for this right corner. I was talking to our colleague Alan McManus who retired three or four years ago and he said he doesn't miss being a professional but this is the situation he misses when you're behind in a frame with a chance to clear up the excitement and the challenge of it. There's such big frames to win you can as I say keep your composure. 32. 33. Could hurt Luca Brussel. Who look for all the world as though he'd take a 3 1 lead. May well be pegged back here to two all. But of course, with every ball potted here from Ali Carter, the pressure increases on him as well. 41. 22 behind, needs all remaining balls. Maybe the arena scoreboard doesn't quite caught up, but Tatiana Wollaston just clarifying the position. Forty-four. Every frame counts the same, but sometimes it's how you win them that can really affect a match. Brussel was sailing, 46. wasn't he, towards three-one, looking really good. Left the chance, Ali Carter needs the remaining colours to level up. 
49. Well, the equation hasn't changed, Ali. You still need the remaining four colours. Well, would you believe it? Ali Carter, 49. Oh, goodness me. Ali can scarcely believe he's missed that brown, and neither can I. Well, even Brissell, who was in shot, looked surprised. Inwardly, I'm sure, delighted. So the clearance has not been made. What a sick... He'll wish now Brissell had just won the frame when he was in. He's annoyed. Still needs... Brown and blue. Brown and Carter can still tie. Well, you can see he will be just a touch hampered by the pink, but he has nothing to do with the cue ball here. If he just rolls the brown in, he'll be on the blue to the right centre. Oh, he didn't fancy dropping the brown in, did he? So he's 18 points Four. ahead. He still needs his blue, and my goodness, this is very missable. Could be a respot, Dom. It's been that sort of day, hasn't it? If you were with us earlier for Alan Selby, you know what I mean. Ah, superb. Nine. Superb pop. He can forget about the ready miss now. He's won the frame after all, and it's a, it's a double sickness for Carter, really. He had the chance. That's the worst thing, when you get the chance. Didn't take it, Mr. Brown. In goes the pink, Thank and you. Luca Purcell is one from a place in the semi-finals of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker. On this dramatic quarter-finals day, he leads Ali Carter 3-1. One to Luca Purcell. It looked for all the world to be 2 2. Ali Carter missing the Luka brown clearing up. Right. And a big task now to stop this man advancing to the semi finals in a meeting, of course, with Mark Allen. Judd Trump against Sean Murphy. And then Ronnie O'Sullivan against John Higgins, still to come today. Attacking safety shot from Ali Carter, bringing many reds into play. Perhaps he's has his own eye on that super maximum break of 167. Luca, though, eyeing up a potential plant here. And the way that Luca won that last frame was actually more beneficial to him psychologically than had he made a frame winning break as he looked as though he was going to make before he missed that red to the right corner. In the end, it was Ali Carter who rue that Miss Brown. And he'll be suffering a little. And even more now that plant's gone in. Now, if you're wondering, you're not allowed to pot the gold ball at this stage. You can only pot it at the end of a maximum. I'll tell you what, you'd love to finish here, wouldn't you? If you'd just potted the black for a 147. You'd love to finish where the white is now. If you were on a super maximum and you were faced with that exact shot and you were watching that golden ball trundle down the cushion towards the pocket, only to see it just turn away from the pockets at the last. Devastating. What a mind you have, Dominic. <laughs> I tell you what, either way, whether you potted it or missed it, you would remember it forever. For good or bad.
Joker's head seemed to move there as he struck the cue ball. He didn't keep still on it at all. But he knew he couldn't guarantee position. And I'd, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, only just guessing, that is, that Ali isn't on a red here. There you are, you see an, an expert in body language. <laughs> I think it, the clues were there, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing with this game, you know, and this is why it is a mental challenge, because he had no right to get away with that, really. But that's the game. Certainly, in terms of not leaving an easy red on. The thing is, Dave, you, you have to change your mentality. You've got to come to the table in Ali's case there and thinking, thank you, my opponent missed that long red that I left him. Because it was a mistake from Ali. He did leave the red, and he was lucky that Luca missed it, particularly with that 3-1 lead that he has. So it's all about creating the right mindset, and that's what champions do. And, of course, Ali is a champion. He's won eight professional titles, five of them major ranking titles. So he knows what's required. Well, for now it's out of his hands. Ooh, no. So, Look up for cell one. Carter's not in his chair for long. Luca was intimating there that the One. black just fractionally turned upwards. It may have done just a couple of millimetres, but it always looked set for that top jaw, and I don't think it was ever going to go in. previous positional shot wasn't a good one but he always had this black over the corner pocket as a fail safe but there's no guarantee he'll get on his next red nicely here and I don't know what he played there I think he was trying to come around that red that he's cannoned into and he's on nothing easy those two reds in the foreground there in our picture could be made into a plant but He'd have to be desperate to take that on. Is there a red on into the right centre that could be potted, though? Even if there is, it's a very dangerous red to attempt. No. Decelerated a little there. Just felt the pressure, Ali, because he knew he should have been on something far more straightforward. So, second chance for Brussel in the frame he needs to get this match won.
Well, he, he didn't Hi. pop the brown that cleanly, actually. He somehow managed to wriggle through that gap. <coughs> it's just got a little bit nervy, hasn't it? As he's trying to get over the line, Carl's just trying to stay in the match. Now, that's Six. a good clean pot, though. <coughs> I was surprised with Lucas' last positional shot because he could have played for the red next to the green to then stun down for the blue and he'd have been much closer to his next red instead of going all around the houses and trusting to luck a little in the end. But he's got a lot more control now. The red that Luke would love to get rid of is the one that's closest to this right corner because could play Nine. from the black from it and then the red next to that one would also be available into the same pocket and all of a sudden the frame just opens up then so that's the red that Luke would love to get onto if he wishes to take the risk. Ten. I think Luca really does need to play for that red. He's looking now at where he can leave the cue ball to be on it. He could play a cannon into the red just to the left of it if he wished as well. But he's in a good position here on the blue. Of is the one to the left of the pink. What's he on here? Twenty-one. Is he on anything? <coughs> yeah, he's okay here, Luca. Would love to have been on that middle red though. Just been able to run through for the black. Now, where's the cue ball going here? He's in off. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, you may think that's unlucky, but I'm afraid that's a poor shot from Luca. That cue ball should never have been anywhere near that middle pocket there. I suppose the only good news for Brussels is that red in bulk was close to the cushion rather than being potable. Otherwise, that could quite conceivably have been 3 2. It's not just that it's big money in this event, it's not just that. I think it's the top stars of the game are all playing each other. It's an elite field, and you kind of get bragging rights, don't you? this week you know whoever wins this will have finished in front of all the others and with the world championship around the corner it's such a boost of confidence particularly for for Luca who's of course going to be trying to avoid the crucible curse and all the rest of it in a few weeks time so it's got a bit nervy If Luca feels he'll have to take this red on to the right corner. Such a good safety from Ali. No, just the containing safety shot. He's made a good job of it.
One. Superb. So, what a chance now to make amends for the last frame. Great red to get in, nicely on the black. Ali Carter with his chance in a match that could have been over, let's be honest, a couple of times already. Oh, he just slightly <clears> overdid <throat> that. So, now he's put pressure on this next red, he needs the rest. Eight. Sort of swallowing down the disappointment, isn't he? Just getting on with the shot. And he hasn't potted it. Wow. Ali Carter, oh. eight. And that could be curtains. Oh, it's infuriating, isn't it, when you play such a poor positional shot? I'm sure Ali played the shot exactly how I mean, envisage playing it for good position on the red, but somehow the cue ball just reacted far more than he thought, and he was in no man's land. You can see what he thinks of, well, I was going to say this evening's proceedings, because we should have started the evening session nearly an hour ago. Yeah, it's 5 to 11 at night here, and there's still two matches to play, but it may be the next one is not too far away. The, the jitters have sort of come on, haven't they? But Brussel has a good chance, you've got to say now, to get it won. Well, Luca will need all four remaining reds, so that includes the one that's near Bolt, which is a little awkward to get onto. Nine. Can't help but feel there's another twist coming somewhere. are struggling to control the cue ball it seems to be very lively but neither player have made a complaint that potentially the cue ball is a little light and that's why they're over screwing it Thirteen. Well, it's certainly been an issue in this match, hasn't it? You know, positional shots just going awry and leaving difficult pots like that that are then missed. So Ali Carter can't quite believe this is still on this match. The way he was sort of looking up to the heavens earlier, like he felt his race was run. It's quite a risk to play a safety off the two reds together near this left side cushion because Luca could easily play the top red and bring the one below it into play. So he's done the right thing here.
It's hidden the red next to the brown pretty much anyway, but this red that Ali's just played safe from is definitely cuttable into this right corner. But it's a bit of a risk to take it on with that red near bulk. You can see the audience sort of watching Ali Carter as much as they're watching the frame because uh, emotions are on show again. In what is a very tense moment in this quarter final. We played the shot exactly according to plan, but the result is perfection, really. Snooker coming to the table, snookered on all three reds. Needs to pick out the right shot here. He doesn't want to bring that awkward red into play near this side cushion. Decent contact, but is that red cuttable? It may not be. No predictions, but it's another chance. It's another sort of trudge back and a rather agonised, not going to call it a smile, but sarcastic look on his face. But he may be back at the table soon. You don't know. It's been that sort of match, certainly in this frame anyway. judge from the body language of Luca Purcell that he's not on this red near the blue. Perhaps he just asked referee Tatiana Wollaston for here. I think he thinks the red may pot. And he's checking for a simultaneous contact. Nine. I think that was OK. For me, Luca needs to put the green safe here, somewhere near where the red is, and get the cue ball perhaps behind the yellow and the blue on the bolt cushion. That's just as good. Luca Purcell, nine.
Lucas picked out a very clever shot there because the yellow is actually right in the way of Ali Khan and did escape here. So, 21 in front, a red and a black, 28 with 27 on. And it was in the lap of the gods there on another day, you know, you fluke a snooker. Black and Ali Carter needs a snooker. Eight. Eight. Well, I don't think he feels. He's had uh, maybe the best run of the ball, but remember that chance he had for 2 2, Mr. Brown. That was the big moment, really, in this match. Two. And it looks like the world champion, Luca Purcell, will advance to a meeting with Mark Allen in the semi finals here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Five. Snooker. And he's shown certainly flashes of the form that we enjoyed over those wonderful 17 days in Sheffield. There is the handshake. It is Luca Purcell who gets the win in our second quarter final. It was quite an edgy affair at times, but as I say, he also showed some of the form that we're used to seeing from him. It's been a quiet season for him, but it's not over yet. And he advances to a meeting with Mark Allen in the semis. He's beaten Ali Carter 4-1, so we're halfway through quarterfinals day. sure we'll hear.